at a few key aspects from my testimony. First, natural gas generation is critical and a critical component to electric grid reliability and will only increase in importance as variable weather-dependent resources become a greater part of our generation mix. In the coming years, natural gas generation will be even more important to electric grid reliability in an era of evolving climate priorities. As the nameplate capacity for wind and solar resources on the electric grid increases, the potential volatility of real-time renewable energy production increases as well. Grid operators will need sufficient dispatchable resources, like natural gas, that can serve as a balancing resource as renewable energy output rises and falls. The most prominent voices highlighting reliability concerns are NERC, FERC, and the grid operators themselves, neutral, independent parties with a great understanding of the threats facing the electric grid. Second, electrification policies are only going to increase demands on the power grid at a time when state and federal policies and regulations are driving existing dispatchable resources off the system. The electric grid expansion is not about a static level of demand being met by dynamic generation resources. Electrification policies are going to continue to increase demand for additional electricity generation. That means we will need more resources, not less, and those resources will have to complement each other to deliver on the goal of reliability. Third, innovative technologies like carbon capture and sequestration, long-duration electric storage, and hydrogen co-firing are promising but are not yet commercially ready for widespread, widespread adoption. Some who would dismiss concerns about the loss of both natural gas and coal generation cite uh, advancements in both long-duration battery storage and CCS technologies to calm fears about reliability. It's important to note that as of June 2023, not a single commercial power plant in the United States uses CCS technology, and there are no megawatts of long-duration multi-day battery storage interconnected to the bulk power system. Co-firing hydrogen, hydrogen with natural gas to reduce carbon emissions is another developing technology that shows promise, yet does not have significant commercial adoption today. <laughs> Under the proposed rule, these technologies will be the key pieces needed to ensure reliability. However, despite not being widely used, there is an intense rush to disconnect existing resources vital to, economic, to electric grid reliability on the assumption that these not yet available technologies will be available when they're needed. The voices seeking to dismiss reliability concerns by arguing the electric industry has always been able to meet policy demands and ensure power is reliable ignore the specifics of the current situation and directly contradict the reliability concerns voiced by NERC, FERC, and the grid operators. Our concern is that the EPA's proposed rule once again puts aspirational policy goals ahead of operational reality. If finalized, these proposed rules will likely lead to power plant retirements or reduced availability due to operational limits at a time when reliability coordinators and regulators have warned that our nation is already facing a reliability crisis due to the accelerated retirement of dispatchable resources. EPSA's members maintain a strong commitment to reliability and stand ready to help the nation meet its reliability and growing energy needs while enabling the coming energy expansion.